Okay, once you've set up your folder for your project and it's shared, you can tell it's shared because the folder will have this icon on it, this little person. Click on it, open it up, and create your first new spreadsheet by clicking on New and going to Sheets. It's going to ask you if you want to create it in a shared folder. You do, because everything you create in this folder is shared with your partner and me, your teacher. And a spreadsheet will load. Give it a title. In this case, remember what we're doing. We're making a calculator for your federal income taxes. And it's based on the different marginal brackets. So federal income tax calculator. There it goes. Okay. So now we need to label things, right? We want to, I want you to set up a heading here, federal income tax brackets. Let's say tax calculator for 2021. Now we have a heading. Here I would type in the word source. We're going to um, copy and paste in the source where this comes from in a moment. Actually, we can do that right now. Let's go to a new tab, IRS federal tax brackets and let's see what pops up so that's for 2020 but here's 2021 so I'm going to click that now all of the information we're getting for this table is actually in this link right here and you could read it to see it but I'm just going to copy control C or command C and then go here I'm going to hit enter go back to the cell and I think you can go to insert link Right, but you can see it tells me a little shortcut here. That's on a Mac, it's Command K, or you can do Control K. So I, I suggest you get used to that because who wants to click insert and scroll down, right? Too much work. So Control K or Command K and then paste that link in and click apply. And now you've got a source for all the data you're putting in here. Then we're gonna go over to column E. I'm gonna skip down to the second row in column E, type in gross income. That's all the income you get before deductions and taxes. Then we're going to take a standard deduction, which we'll talk about in class. Then we're going to look at what's called a taxable income. Taxable income is just gross income minus standard deductions. Then we have some room for our table. Now, where you put this table is completely up to you, I think usually I would say, but here, I want you to follow me exactly so that you get used to what's happening, right? So I'm going to go over to column B. Here's column B. And I'm going to put my headers in row 6. So in B6, that's column B, row 6, I'm going to type in marginal rates. Then I'm going to type in more than, creating a chart for our calculator, up to, and the word range. And these are headings. So I would select them all. I just I hold shift and then type the right arrow or left arrow depending on where your cursor is and hit control B. Then I'm going to go here and do the same thing, control B, and then select these and hit control B. These are some of our uh, headings and we want to be clear about that. Now before you enter any numbers in this column right here, I would click B and you want to, these are going to be percents. So we're going to type in uh, percents as we go along. So if you click format up here, and then you go to number, there's a percent here, but this percent's not needed. It's got the decimal to the hundredth, so we don't really want that. I selected it for now, so I just went to number and I clicked on this percent. But then if I scroll down, I see there's more formats. And you can see it has some of my recents saved. So if I go to more fo formats, and I go to custom number format, here I can select the percent without it being rounded to the nearest hundredth. I click apply. And now when I type in my percents, which are 10, 12, it automatically adds the percent sign, 24, 32, 35, and 37. Okay, those are my marginal rates. These numbers you can get right from uh, the website or you can just follow along here, but these are money values. So I'm gonna hit shift, right, right, down, 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 down. You can use the trackpad or a mouse if you prefer. And actually, I'm going to go over one more as well. So I'm going to select all of that. So then I'm going to go to Format, and then we go to Number, and I want to pick 
uh, this, this is money, right? We're in uh, personal finance and we're dealing with money. I think to the nearest hundred, hundredth here is appropriate for currency. So select currency. And then as we enter our values in, it'll automatically add the dollar sign to the nearest hundredth. So we have zero. And then in the first bracket goes from zero all the way up to and including 9950. And then I'm going to go from 9950. So starting at 9950, but not including it, up to, it's a big range, 4525, right, including that number. Then at 22%, it starts off right above 4525. So it doesn't include that number, it goes right above it, all the way up to 86375. Then in the next row at 24%, it's 86,375. And it, it doesn't include that number. So basically, as soon as you have more than one penny above that, you're in a 24% bracket. So if you have $86,365.01, or any fraction of a coin above that, you're in this bracket. And it goes all the way up to 164000 925, you see that these ranges are getting larger. Then in the 32% you go from 134, 925, up to 209, 425. In the 35% you go 209, 425, up to 523, 600. And then you go from 523, 600, up to essentially infinity. There's no upper bound there. Now, the last couple of things you want to do, go over to E14. That's when I believe I have it. E, nope. Let's go to E15. Let's go down one and type in tax credits. That's in E15, colon. Total taxes paid, colon. Effective tax rate, colon. And we are basically all set. Just a couple of last things. I would select these three, shift up, up, and control B to bold it. I also want to make this column a little bit wider because I don't want to cut off there. That looks better. Then I'm going to click this button over here. I want to center everything vertically. So by clicking vertical alignment and middle, it looks a lot cleaner. And then here, text wrapping just means we're going to fit the text in a cell. Like you see right over here, this text goes between two different cells. Yuck. So we're going to wrap that. Boom. Then what we're going to do is align it uh, in the center here, horizontally. So not horizontally, in the center, uh, actually vertically. So this up, down, vertical, up, down, actually, I feel like this should say the vertical alignment, um, I guess it makes sense to call it a horizontal, a vertical center, but anyway. I'm confusing myself. So there's a horizontal alignment in the center. Okay, I did say it right. Phew. Horizontal alignment and then vertical alignment, both in the center. So it's looking better. But I don't like that this row is scrunching out the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Shift and Right. I'm going to merge these cells right here. So I, there's this button right here for Merge Cells. Boom. And it's looking better. Right? But what we want to do is get this as clean as possible. So I'm going to widen this a little bit. Boom. And now it's looking good. So I got this table set up. I'm looking around for anything I want to adjust. And I think I'm happy with it right now. Okay, so we're going to leave it here. Only thing is maybe let's grab this row and drag it down. And I would add a color here. Something that kind of focuses your attention on this line, right? Maybe I'll use green here for money. Boom. So now that's kind of like a heading for our page. That looks a little bit better to me. So we've got everything set up here. It looks good. This is the end of the first step. You've got all your table, your table ready to go.